Hello everyone and welcome to part 1 of this series on how to build a WP Taksh tool changer 3D printer. This tool changer 3D printer does not require the use of any custom milled metal parts nor does it require a specific frame configuration. What that means is this can be installed on any frame configuration meeting a basic set of requirements which I will discuss further in the video. This includes the Voron Trident, the Voron 1.8 and the vCore 3 uh, Core XY tool uh, machine. In this first video I will be going over the design overview, the locking mechanism and the compatibility with different Core XY machines like the Trident or the Rattrick V Core, as I just mentioned. So, without further ado, let's get into the video. And I will start off by giving a brief background on the basic concept of the tool changer, as well as what the inspirations for the uh, specific design that I have come up with is. So the basic design is inspired by the Woodpecker tool changer that was developed by Zib33 on YouTube uh, and also carried on by Mr. Bean66. Um, both of whom are members of the Voron community and there is a separate discord that the initial design of the Woodpecker tool changer was designed on or was discussed on. Um, so the basic locking mechanism was the work um, on was the work that was done on the Woodpecker tool changer. I've taken that improved um, the design to um, meet certain goals that I had laid out, which I will again discuss as, as we progress in the video. The tool changer concept that I call WP Taksh is a combination of two names. WP stands for woodpecker, which is to pay, um, which is to link the variant that I have developed to the original woodpecker concept and Daksh is a word in the Indian language Hindi which uh, is my mother tongue which essentially means skilled or accurate so I thought that was an apt name for uh, the tool changer and um, uh, so I call my variant WP Daksh uh, mo <coughs> moving forward so um, as many of you would be already be familiar with the, what a tool changer is um, and there are multiple designs that are out um, in the in this commercial space um, one of them the first one was essentially the e3d tool changer which supported four tools and um, the next one that uh, I came across was Jubilee. Both of these required the use of custom milled parts, metal parts, and very specific frame configurations as well as builds to um, be able to um, be used. So for an average hobbyist like me, that was not an option. The Woodpecker tool changer that I came across did not require any custom milled 3D part, uh, custom milled metal parts, and I thought that was um, uh, a really unique um, aspect of the concept that uh, Zib and Mr. Bean had come up with. So um, I built the V1 of that uh, tool changer concept, but observed quite a few issues in terms of reliability as well as um, some of the mechanisms 
that were prone to errors. So the WP Dutch variant takes the concept forward and um, tries to address the issues that I had and make the woodpecker concept much more reliable. Um, so moving on to um, the discussion on the design overview of the tool changer. Before we go there, I just want to kind of take a couple of minutes to, to address who this tool changer is aimed at. So as I mentioned earlier, this tool changer essentially is not frame specific and does not require any custom mill paths. So that essentially means it should be adaptable to a variety of machines out there, given that someone uh, is, is willing to put some work in modifying um, the, the files to suit their particular build. Um, so I am building this on the basis, on, on a Trident, Voron Trident frame. And the, the basic requirements that uh, are required for the, the wood, WP Daksh um, tool changer to be installed is the fact that it should be a 2020 extrusion based system and the back extrusion should be empty without any obstacles for the carriage to go and pick up the tools. So as, as you might have seen in the initial intro video, the tools are placed on the back here and the carriage essentially goes and picks the tool and drops the tool on this back extrusion. So to, in its stock form, if you look at the Trident frame, there is this vertical extrusion in the back that will hamper the ability for um, me to place tools all along this extrusion. I could possibly place a couple of one tool in here, one tool in here, but all of this space would essentially have to be left empty because this carriage cannot go past this lead screw um, in order to drop or pick up the tools. And there's limited space in here to uh, for the docks and stuff to be uh, put in as well. So the solution that I came up with was to move the whole Z um, system 90 degrees to the right. So this leads to stays here and the this one essentially moves to this um, corner and the back lead screw or the back uh, motion system essentially moves to the side or to the right side of the frame. Um, so that is one thing that will have to be um, kept in mind that while you're building this tool changer, the back extrusion needs to be empty. If we were to look at the V core three model, it's, it's a very similar model to what the Trident is because both of them essentially are riding on three Z lead screws, but the, um, the V core has this extrusion that is, um, in front of the back extrusion that is there. So all the tools will have to go onto this back extrusion and the Z motion will again have to be lifted or uh, have to be rotated, rotated about 90 degrees for the back extrusion to be empty. But in, in case of uh, the, the V core, I think there is enough space for four tools without even doing that. Um, each of the tools in my design takes about 60 mm of space and can be parked anywhere where the carriage can reach. So I think there should be two space for two tools in here. This is a four by 400 by 400 build. Even on a 350 by 350 build, I believe there should be space for four tools to um, be put in the back extrusion 
for um, a weak system to work. Um, the carriage obviously will need to be changed to the one that uh, comes with uh, the WP Dutch uh, design. That essentially is based on MGN 12 rail that will uh, be front facing <coughs> and uses uh, a locking mechanism in the back to pick and drop tools, which I will discuss um, next. One other thing that I've done in case of my build is that I've replaced the Z screws, Z lead screws with belts. Um, it's just a personal choice. Um, I do not like lead screws. So I um, modified the Trident design about a year back to build a, a belted Z uh, Trident uh, build and I modified the design also to do the 90 degree rotation as part of that uh, belted Z build. So the the belted Z design that I came up with was based on the <coughs> based on the the umbilic the Voron Zero um, belted Z that um, uh, was done by uh, one of the persons one of the uh, members on the Voron community. Um, so if you look at this design. Um, I essentially have this is the front facing in here so I modified the AB drive one of the AB drives to actually have a belted Z um, pulley same goes for uh, the front idler and then uh, the back extrusion uh, the back the Z motion from the back extrusion was moved to the right so what that meant is essentially there was no vertical extrusion um, in the back and it gave me the entire um, back extrusion to play with so if you actually look at uh, the extrusion here this is this has space for about six tools that are there and the um, the z motion on the back has shifted to this side in here um, so that is just one personal uh, preference thing that i did if you ha have lead screws i think uh, that that should also be fine um, but you might have to flip the rails to the top and flip the Z, the X point joints the other way around to allow for that motion to be um, not to for the X Y joints not to hit the um, the belted Z or the lead screw on the right hand um, side of the uh, motion. So that is one thing that uh, will need to be changed. Uh, apart from that, as long as the back extrusion is free, you have a 2020 um, extrusion based system and um, you have a board, electronics board that is capable of supporting extra tools uh, with steppers and hotends. This system should be uh, something that you can very easily print on your existing printer. Um, and just assemble and get it working on any Core XY machine um, that um, one can adapt it to. So um, having said that, uh, let's move on to the main um, discussion around the design of the carriage and the tools and the locking mechanism. So as I mentioned, the clamping mechanism is based on the woodpecker tool changer concept that uh, was developed by Zib and Mr. Bean, uh, both members of the war on Discord. Um, and it is a very innovative design in the sense that it does not use the normal E3D locking mechanism or the locking pin, but uses a completely different mechanism uh, for the tool locking and unlocking. The tool itself is based on either a Dragon or a V6 hotend uh, with a Sherpa Mini 
on its on uh, on top as an extruder uh, and it has these two clamps um, all of these are 3d printed uh, parts that are then used to lock the tool with the carriage so the carriage uses a servo as the main driver for the locking mechanism which in turn drives uh, an eccentric horn pushing a cam up or down which pushes this locking pin up or down depending on how the servo moves there is an m3 screw that goes through this locking clamp which is pushed up by the spring and there are two v6 nozzles that tie back into those two holes that are on the tool pushing the tool up into the roof of the carriage keeping it locked in place these two m4 uh, smooth rods essentially keep the tool in place while it is locked and it is also used for alignment purposes so this was the original concept that zib uh, came up with and mr bean improved upon it um, and i built the v1 of the tool changer um, based on this design but i had issues with the docking of the tool uh, into the dock sometimes the pickup would fail or the dock drop would fail uh, and at other times um, some of the alignment would not be correct when uh, these if the tool was to actually move um, to the side uh, sometimes also I had issues with the servo failing um, because of the uh, the heavy load that was being put on while uh, pushing um, the clamp up or down so my aim with the wp dux tool changer was to improve on this concept um, and address some of the issues that i was having so in the wp dux uh, tool changer uh, variant i've kept the locking mechanism to be the same as the one that Zib came up with, which is the servo that is being used as well as uh, the, the locking clamps as well as and the um, locking pins on the tool. But I've addressed uh, a couple of issues um, for reliability as well as for a better usage of the space that is available um, in the tool changer. So one thing we have to keep in mind is that when you add something like a tool changer into an existing frame, you are going to lose space on the Y axis because there will be a tool that is docked as well as a tool that is um, on the carriage. So the amount of space that you will lose is two times the depth of the tool. So reduce the size of the tool to address some of the space um, usage concerns. In addition, I've uh, modified the docking system to use um, magnets to keep the uh, the tool in place with much more force, allowing um, it to handle the recoil being uh, put in by the PTFE and the wire looms that um, come in from this back um top extrusion down into uh, the top of the tool so there's significant recoil because i'm using a 1.5 mm piano wire to keep the loop in shape uh, and for it not to drop um, on the side so the the extra magnets that i've added in um, do help with that um, that uh, recoil uh, and keep the tool in place uh, firmly what that also does is that it allows um 
us to consistently pick up pick the tool up um, and when it uh, it is docked it essentially remove, moves it back into the same position as um, um, as when it was um, uh, earlier uh, docked um, this, this leads to better repeatability um, and I've had uh, tests running with um, more than 3000 3500 tool changes in one go without even a single failure um, in addition, I've added a purge mechanism, um, which again is based on um, a design of GrabCAD. I will uh, post a link uh, to the credit for whoever came up with this design um, in the description. But it's an excellent design. Uh, I've made some changes to um, allow for uh, the, uh, the nozzle to be blocked while the tool is parked. And then um, for uh, the purge to work similar to the way that uh, it works in the Pebble Viper. Uh, and then there are, uh, there are going to be um, silicon strips here to wipe the nozzle before it actually moves back uh, into the build space. So all of this is working fine in my tests. Um, and it's definitely improvement upon the, um, the brass brush that I was using that used to cause uh, zits and um, uh, filament um, uh, pieces to move on to the build plate. Um, each of the tool takes about, about 60 mm of space from um, on, on the back extrusion. So I have six tools being accommodated on a 350 build of the Trident. The tools support a V6 hot end as well as a dragon hot end. Um, and the parts fan is shared between all the tools, but each tool has its own hot end heater fan, which is on the side here. Um, in addition, each tool has um, space for a breakout board. Um, I'm using the BTT breakout boards for uh, the um, to manage uh, better connections. Uh, and um, it is required. It is not required, but it is advisable for easy management um, of the of the tools themselves. Um, in addition, I um, have modified the carriage to allow me to use a small cable chain, which is again three D printed um, as the way of carrying the wires onto the carriage. So the carriage needs three wires for the servo and three wires for the probe. Um, this is an Omron um, 5mm sensing probe um, and two wires for the path fan and another two wires for the micro switch that is on the carriage. Um, some of the wires can actually be reduced. I think in total we require about nine wires because um, some of the wires can actually be used across multiple uh, uh, components. The micro switches are also based uh, are also placed on the on the docks, um, which allow us to detect if a tool actually has been docked correctly or not, or if it has been picked up correctly or not. So in addition, the, the, um, the micro switch on the carriage also tells me if the tool has been picked up correctly by the carriage or not. So if a tool has dropped out, what that essentially means, if let's say if a tool actually gets dropped onto the, uh, onto the build plate, um, the, this micro switch will indicate that the tool has been picked up, but this will actually tell me that the tool actually has not been picked up. So what this, allows me to do is intelligent error detection um, and also um, recovery in some of the cases where uh, let's say we have an issue with uh, dropping the tool off or picking the tool uh, in some cases. I have a detailed video um, detailing uh, on um, demonstrating this um, capability of the tool changer uh, which I will link to in the description that you can actually see to um, to observe this feature in uh, uh, in, in action. Um, I have also developed another carriage that allows 
me to use Voron tap system instead of the uh, instead of the Omron probe. Um, I have tested it uh, and it works fine, but uh, for now I'm actually sticking with uh, the Omron probe because I'm not uh, sure of um, the the long term effect of pushing uh, down on on a tool that is not um, completely connected to the carriage S because there is um, space for the tool to flex so i'm still sticking with uh, the um, the probe based uh, abl detection uh, the part cooling fan is a 50 15 uh, part cooling fan and uh, it allows uh, for efficient cooling i think this can be um, changed to like a 50 25 if more cooling is needed um, so it should not be difficult to actually change to 5025 because there's enough space in here um, to allow for that. Um, in addition, one thing that I've done to reduce the chances of a servo getting burnt out is that I've uh, implemented in the software part of the, um, the tool changer an ability to shut the servo on or off based on when um, it is required. So there is a physical relay that actually cuts the power out to the servo in case the, um, the servo is not required to be operational. So the servo only is needed when you're doing a tool change. At all other times, the servo is not required to keep the tool in place uh, or to be coupled with the with the carriage. So the the actual time that the servo is needed is, is very short, the window is very short and physically cutting off the power um, should help uh, increase the servo life uh, against doing something like uh, um, a width equal to zero in the servo command. Because what I've seen is that the servo that, that I'm using, which is a high-tech HS82MG servo with a lot of torque, it has an, a knack to get burnt out if there is even a slight deviation uh, in terms of the position that it needs to be. Let's say if it's an angle of zero, if it does not reach zero, it will just keep humming and try to go back to zero. And that leads to um, the servo getting burnt out. In case of physically cutting the power out using a relay, um, the servo does not uh, um, keep trying to home back onto zero um, and that's that saves the servo so um, that is another change that i made to improve the reliability of the tool change as well as the, the longevity of the servo um, so that is an explanation of the design the next part of this series is going to start focusing on the actual build uh, we will be assembling the carriage first, um, then the tool, one of the tools. We will, then um, in in subsequent parts of the series, we will actually be looking at how to put the tool and the carriage together, aligning um, the um, the tools to be in line with the carriage, um, as well as some of the electronics and the hardware. Um, aspects for uh, the driver boards as well as the connections and then finally we'll look at the software um, configuration this series is going to be a complete series in terms of where you should be able to take this concept and build it yourself on whatever machine that you have not necessarily a trident or uh, uh, one that i have uh, built this on it can be any machine that it can actually be adapted on the files will be released out uh, very soon so they will be available for you to actually modify uh, unfortunately uh, there's not going to be any cad file to start off with because i don't know um, fusion 360 all i know is autocad um, uh, all i know is uh, is tinkercad and that is what i'm um, working off so tinkercad only exports stls uh, i will share a link to the tinkercad project as well um, when we get to the release but um, i'm pretty sure someone will actually come along 
and and convert this into a into a Fusion 360 file for uh, others to look at. Um, so that's that's part one of this um, build process that uh, um, I'm going to be focusing on over the next month or so. Uh, I think that this is going to be a seven or eight part series based on all the topics that we need to cover and how we need to progress. Um, so hit me up for any comments or any questions that you have in, in the YouTube videos. Um, and I'll um, also drop a link to the Discord channel where um, uh, we can discuss any anything that you need to discuss um, regarding uh, the build. And if um, uh, I can help in any way, I'll, I'll be glad to help. Um, so part two, I will be working on uh, building the carriage over the next uh, few days. And uh, I will push the part two of the series out uh, as soon as I can. Uh, till then, goodbye. And uh, I hope you guys um, like uh, uh, the series and uh, are... Uh, uh, looking to build a tool changer that uh, you can adapt to um, any of the systems that you currently have. Thank you.